Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at the natural logarithm. We're going to look at some derivatives and integrals of it. We're going to take a look at five problems here to try and get a basic look of how these problems look like and how to solve them. So first two derivatives. We're going to first find the derivative of the natural log of 2x plus 7. So this is a composition function. Uh, because you have 2x plus 7 as the inside function and the natural log as the outside. So you're going to use the chain rule and we can go slow with it and we're going to let u equal 2x plus 7, which that means u prime is equal to 2, just 2. And then you have the outside function is your natural log, natural log of u. And now what we know to be the derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over u. Okay, so put that together, you have derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inner times derivative of the inner function. Multiply those together and you have 2 over 2x plus 7, and that's your derivative. Okay, so once we've discovered that derivative of natural log of u is in fact 1 over u, it's pretty easy to find these derivatives. Now the fact that it is a natural log, well, logarithms come with different properties and that's going to help us in this second problem over here. Remember you have your product properties, quotient properties, and power properties to let you um, pull apart or expand logarithms. That can help you in finding this derivative. Because now you could do this derivative and just have all of that inside be your u, find the derivative of it. That would involve using a quotient rule. You could even let this x divide each of these, uh, simplify a little bit, and then do your u. But here's what I'm going to argue for. I'm going to say let's use properties of logarithms to pull this apart a little bit and make it just a little bit easier. Okay, so because the quotient property, division on the inside, means subtraction on the outside, I now have this. And now if I take the derivative of this, that means, of course, taking the derivative of each of them. So I have, uh, for a natural log of x squared plus x squared minus 3, I have u equal x squared minus 3, u prime equals 2x. Okay, and then, so you have derivative of the outside function, 1 over u, x squared minus 3, times derivative of the inner function. Minus, well, derivative of natural log is just 1 over x, piece of cake. Okay, so by pulling it apart, by using the properties of logarithms, it split it up into a lot of really easy and manageable natural log uh, derivatives. Okay, then that will be even more useful um, because inside this you could have a square root. Well, then you have a little square root, that means it's an exponent to the one half power, so you can use the power property. Um, so you can pull it apart a few times. So using those properties of logarithms before taking the derivative can also be a, a really helpful first step. Well, let's try some natural log integrals. Okay, now looking at the first one, you're like, well, there's no natural log there. Well, that's because remember, derivative of natural log is what? 1 over x. So what does that mean? Well, that means the integral of 1 over x is natural log. Ah, so in fact, our natural log integrals here are going to involve something of the form 1 over u, if I can make my u substitution in the correct way. So if I can find a way to make the correct u substitution to get in the form 1 over u, then I'll be able to take the integral, and that's the key to this. All right, so the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx. I'm kind of looking at the denominator and I'm saying that's a pretty complicated thing. I think that's what I want my u to be. I want u to equal x squared plus 1. Because that's the most complicated portion of the function right there. So I'm saying what might happen if I let u equal that? Well then du is 2x dx. Oh, and when I substitute this in, notice I have an x dx right there. So I just have to divide by 2. So I can say this equals one-half the integral of du over u. 
which if you want that written a little bit different, that's 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du. Hey, what do you know? That's equal to 1 half times the natural log of u plus c. And what do we have as u? 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c. And there's our integral. Now something you may have noticed um, that I kind of went over without talking about is I put the absolute bars here for natural log. That's because technically we have the integral of 1 over x dx is defined as the natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, the absolute value there to ensure that what is inside the natural log is always positive. Because think about it, when we're going this way, that x down there, that can be negative. There's nothing wrong with 1 over negative 2. But then if I say the integral is the natural log of x, that x can no longer be negative. If it was a negative 2, I can't have the natural log of negative 2. It, a natural log cannot be 0 or negative. So we put the absolute value bars there to make sure we don't run into that problem. So every time you take the nat have a natural log integral, just have absolute value bars. Moving on to our next problem. Two more. So I have 1 over x times natural log of x down the denominator there. This is one of my favorite integrals just because the way it works out. It involves both the integral and derivative of natural log. So your first instinct might be to let u equal x times natural log of x. Um, but that derivative is going to be a product rule. And it's just going to end in messiness. So in fact, what you're going to do is you're going to let u equal natural log x. That means du is 1 over x dx. Ah, do you see it? So you have the integral of 1 over x times 1 over natural log x dx, which is another way to write this. So if I let u equal natural log, well then I have 1 over u there, 1 over x dx, that's just my du. Okay, so this and this go to my du. Whoa, look, I just have the integral of du over u, which is equal to the natural log of u plus c. And what is u? It's the natural log again. So we end up with the function, the natural log of the natural log of x plus c. Pretty nifty integral right there. All right, so it comes down to being smart with what you choose for your u. In that one, we chose natural log of x, and then our du was that 1 over x. Pretty neat. All right, one final one, and this one's actually pretty easy. It just involves trig functions, so thought we should take a look at it. Okay, so you're noticing a lot of times when natural log is going to be the integral, it's going to be a quotient. So when I see cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x, I'm thinking it might be natural log. Not all the time, but... If the derivative of your denominator is the numerator, it's probably a natural log. So in this case, let's let u equal 1 plus sine x. That means du is equal to derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of sine x, cosine x, dx. Ah, piece of cake. So up top, cosine x dx becomes du. Denominator is u. Integral of d over u, well, that's just natural log of u. And what is our u in this case? It is 1 plus sine x. All right, so easy integral there. Don't let the trig function scare you too much. Couldn't be easier.